We present an algorithm for creating hyperlapse videos at real-time rates. Here we show an example of our algorithm running on a mobile phone. Unlike current approaches such as the Instagram app, our approach relies only on visual information. This allows it to be used on any platform or device and it can be run on previously captured videos. When the video capture ends, a short processing phase runs to select frames and stabilize them. In our mobile app, we pre-compute six speeds and provide the user with the ability to view the stabilized time-lapse or hyperlapse at these set speeds. Here we show the 8x hyperlapse result from the phone app. This can be saved or shared. As the video is being processed, we track frames and compute the costs to transition from each frame to a number of following frames. The cost is related to the amount of visual motion that would be incurred by each transition. Here we show the costs as a matrix being filled for 6 seconds of an input video captured during a 5K run using a body-mounted GoPro camera. A naive time-lapse would consist of simply selecting every nth frame. Here we choose every 16th frame for a 16x speedup, shown as the black line. We developed a dynamic programming algorithm to select the frames that approximate a 16x speedup, but minimize a total cost equaling the sum of the transition costs plus a cost for violating the target 16x speedup. This results in a different set of frames that can be aligned better as shown by the magenta line. Here we compare naive time-lapse to naive hyperlapse and to our result. Note that the selection of frames using our algorithm avoids abrupt changes, leading to a much smoother result. This illustration shows how allowing unequal spacing in frame selection can lead to smoother results. We show the input camera X translation for the entire sequence, the naive frame selection, and our frame selection. Naive equally spaced frames cannot adapt to the natural jitter in the camera motion. Here we show a comparison to the Instagram hyperlapse app which uses only the gyro for stabilization. Our results are a bit more stable as the gyro can only track rotation while our approach can compensate for rotation and some camera translation. In addition, our approach can skip frames that don't align well. In these so-called selfie lapses, Instagram appears to lock onto the background since it does not examine the visual information. In contrast, our hyperlapse approach stabilizes the face, which produces a less jarring result. Here we compare to a set of videos from Kopf et al. The Kopf et al. method is based on 3D reconstruction, while ours is based on 2D tracking. Our results are comparable with a little less consistent constant motion, but with many fewer artifacts on dynamic objects in the scene. Our results compare favorably, however our method is hundreds of times faster. However, there are some limitations. Our method is not able to handle scenes with a lot of parallax and objects near the camera where the 2D tracking assumptions are violated and there's little overlap between subsequent frames. We can create equal time or equal motion results, where in the latter the frames are picked to even out the camera velocity. In this comparison, you'll see the equal motion approach adjusts the frame rate picking to slow down the faster pans and speed up the slower ones. Here we show several additional results.